So it's Christmas time in the city, but how do we celebrate? Do we do our annual Christmas poem with the requisite outtakes of the kind folks we hoodwink into spreading a good cheer? Feliz Navidad! Feliz Navidad! If you're happy, you know it. Prospero año y felicidad. I want to wish you a Merry Christmas from the bottom of my heart. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. Or perhaps do we do something different? Like find a German interpretation of Santa's sleigh and drive it in a place not quite the North Pole. And so on this 25th day of 2015, we not only celebrate Christmas, but the finale of our show's season five. Friends, welcome to the big island of Hawaii. So I don't know if you guys have heard, but the normally aspirated flat six in the 991 Carrera S is sadly going away. But Porsche, they're throwing a party of sorts. What they're doing is they're taking that engine, the 3.8 flat six, and they're putting it in this handy dandy carrying case. Uh, here it puts out 375 horsepower, which comes in at 6,750 RPM, and 309 pound-feet of torque, which comes in at 4,750 RPM, stays flat all the way to 6,000 RPM. Uh, now, if you notice from the Boxster GTS episode, that's about 36 pound-feet more, so quite a bit more here. Now, there's two extra things going on here. Number one, the sport exhaust is fitted as standard. And number two, and this is most important, you and I, I feel as of late, have been having a lot of depressing conversations in terms of transmission choices. Uh, well, here today is not going to be one of those days. So basically what I'm going to tell you is there's only one choice of transmission on offer and I'll let you guess what it is. Okay, so let's get this straight out of the way. Today, an incredibly good day at the office. And not for the obvious reasons. Yes, I told you, a lot of horsepower and more torque back there. But there's something else going on. An old muscle car trick. Take your bigger engine, put it into your smaller car. But this one, it's got a German twist on it and that you get your bigger engine, which sounds. Santa Maria Madre de Dios. And then it, you put it in a smaller car even better, so you don't have like a muscle car or the heft of a muscle car around you. And that's when we get into the weight. So this is just a shade under 2,900 pounds. So if you're doing the math, this is about 100 pounds lighter than that Boxster GTS we drove back in July. So now let's do some math here. Where does that weight come from? Well, you look at the top, that's the obvious. It doesn't have any insulation and that whole power mechanism is gone. And the actual, it kind of looks like it's tacked on, which we'll get into later. And then there's the less obvious here. Uh, it turns out that air conditioning and a radio are fitted as optional. So this car has it, uh, but uh, you get the car and you actually don't get air conditioning or a radio fitted unless you... Sp oh, hey now! That was awesome! I love my job! Uh, anyway, back to what you don't get when you first spec the car out. Now, technically it is a no-cost option, so it's not like you're gonna pay extra for it, but really, how does that translate to out here on the road? Pulling power, so we got a little bit of a straight here. It's, it, it's very much like the Boxster GTS. You don't realize how fast this car is. Like you get into it and like, oh yeah, this is a quick car, but then you start looking at some of the numbers and you look at basically what you're covering in terms of distance, and you're like, oh my God, I didn't realize how fast this car is. And that is exactly the feeling that you got in the Boxster GTS. This is just uh, a couple of steps even farther up on my roller coaster kind of road here. That's my super double secret Hawaiian racetrack. Um, 4.3 seconds to 60. Uh, so with that, oh my God. I, people, this, this is, oh yes, very much in my wheelhouse. Uh, I am going to steal a uh, viewer's comment in that this is definitely my pair of gloves. So in the tech review episode, you and I spent a lot of time charting the changes between a Boxster GTS, a Cayman GT4, and this. 
Suffice to say, we are not going to go through that exercise again because it is quite an extensive list. But to recap, um, this starts with the basic of a Boxster GTS X73 suspension. Then they pull out the PASM, then they pilfer the brakes from a 991 Carrera S, uh, and then they take the steering rack from a 911 Turbo. So it's kind of like a family Porsche suspension of sorts. So how does that dull familia kind of stuff work out on the road? So you and I haven't completely covered this sort of driving on the moon thing. And really what it involves is elevation changes. A lot of elevation changes, which is a great experiment for driving dynamics. So let's talk a little ethos here. That Cayman GT4, that is a track car. I just look at the bits it has. It has GT3 bits. They were made by Porsche Motorsport. You know, they have limited capacity to build that kind of stuff. That is a track car. This was never intended to be a track car. This was intended to be like a canyon carving car. I don't think they intended it to be quite a moon carving car, but we're gonna try it anyway. And the biggest thing that I'm noticing, look at all of this elevation change. Here we are, the suspension doesn't even compress that much when you're in a valley, but then let's get to the top here in a little speed. Please don't try this at home. It doesn't really extend at the top of the range that much, it stays incredibly balanced, but incredibly composed. Now, there's a couple things going on here. Uh, number one, uh, Porsche torque vectoring is standard on all spiders. Uh, number two, these have a fixed damper. You can't even get past them on these cars. So, and number three, notice how tight this road is. I have very limited inputs as I, as I go over incredible elevation changes here. And what we have is much faster steering and that's derived from the 911 Turbo. They put the rack in there from the 911 Turbo. So there's a lot of moving parts that, again, not a huge surprise over the box with GTS, just incredibly balanced. And I would argue balanced to a level that is not normal. This, the, the sharpened skills on this thing, I wouldn't quite call it a track car just yet. But I would say, Santa Maria, Madre de Dios. I mean, as a Lotus guy, this is pretty, pretty damn close. Okay, so let's assume we don't want a hamburger and we want to lose some weight. Uh, then we must have humu humu, nuku nuku, amo aho, apple. Apple. Oh. Or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> so in a number of previous Porsche episodes, you and I have spent a lot of time fooling around with Sport and Sport Plus. But here we have to look at this a bit differently because there's a lot less moving parts going on. Remember, PASM is not standard here, nor is it even offered, so you don't have the adjustable dampers. So what does all this do? Uh, well, let's go into Sport, and the first thing you notice, Sport changes uh, the throttle mapping. That's really the biggest difference here. So, okay, that's great. You get a little bit more responsive throttle. Well, what does Sport Plus do if it doesn't adjust the dampers or really anything else? Well, here we go into Sport Plus. Notice, I'm gonna downshift to go up this hill here you get active rev matching. That's really the biggest difference of Sport to Sport Plus. The other thing, it engages the Sport exhaust, and you know, how many times have I told you this thing should be compulsory, in fact, the Porsche listens, in the Spider. so I guess, feeling dunk. Uh, the other thing about Sport Plus, the, the uh, spoiler in the rear, it engages at certain speeds when you go into Sport Plus. You can also override that with this manual button here and just have the spoiler in the extended mode for more downforce whenever the hell you feel like it. Like now! So here's a fun fact. Uh, the previous Boxster Spider, the 2011 model year, took a total of 15 steps to put the roof up. This is 2015, and this particular one is a 2016 model year car. So let's try this trick again, shall we? Uh, step one, we need to release the boot, trunk, whatever you want to call it. And notice this clamshell piece here with streamliners or 
fairings in some parts is much different from a regular boxer and very cool. And it's got different hinges back here, which obviously go to the lightweight. Now, step two, we actually have to put the roof up. This is not an electric top. So this whole thing can be done with one person, as you can see, and then kind of guide it in there. So now we're, what, two steps. So let's go back to third step, and that is putting the clamshell fairing streamliner thing down. You don't want to push too hard. And then there's these flying buttresses here. Notice you don't have electric tops. You don't have the whole mechanism here that brings the top down. There's little buttons beneath the canvas. So this is step four, but we're gonna call this one 4A because we gotta come over here and do 4B and uh, find that same button over here. And just in case you were confused that uh, in terms of what your car was, Porsche has very kindly uh, reinforced spider right below your flying buttress. And then we gotta go to step five. And step five is we gotta get the key out again. Uh, we step into the vehicle, and actually, this is somewhat of an electric roof. So let's start, or not only really start the car, just turn the electric on. And then, make sure this is in place. Hit the button. Locks it in place. Windows come up. And with that, what is it? Step six, six and a half steps, with some multiple steps there. Voila! You have a closed roof, Boxster Spider. Okay, if we already fiddled with the damn roof, we might as well drive the car with the top up, even though we don't want to. And the biggest thing we notice, it's louder. I know this comes as a huge shock to you, uh, but it's louder because it doesn't have any insulation here. Remember that Boxster GTS we drove back in July? Had this beautifully finished convertible top in here, had all of like these like whiz-bang electric bits to take the roof down. Well, here you don't have that. Uh, and, and really, let's think about this. There are two huge benefits to this new setup. Uh, number one, you can actually take this thing through a car wash now. The previous one you couldn't take through a car wash. And number two, you can take this thing to top speed. So like the previous one, you could only take it to 120 miles an hour. I know this is a huge imposition. Uh, this one you can take all the way to a buck 83 with this roof up. Uh, so it really kind of tells you how much more engineering and effort went into the covering here. But let's think about theory. Yes, it's louder, it's, it's imperfect. I love. But I honestly think the kind of person that's going to be buying a car like this, they are going out of their way for the noise and imperfection of this roof. And to that, I say bravo. So good news, we had lunch. Bad news, we had pizza. And then we saw this, this stunning, beautiful fish. Uh, was here chilling with the uh, chef over there, uh, and he was telling me he has not seen a whitefish this this large ever. And think about this: this thing was originally about four feet with a head and a tail down here. Uh, but what is it called? Well, on the mainland where we come from, uh, this is the wahoo fish, indigenous to the Pacific Ocean. Uh, but here in these parts, it is known as the ono, which is not just this fish; it's also the term for delicioso. Okay, so a funny thing. Not but minutes ago, you and I were driving in a place that looked like the moon. And now, just a couple of miles down the road, we're in a place that looks like Middle Earth. I, mean, I swear to God, I feel like I've just driven to New Zealand. So far in this episode, you and I have spent a lot of time talking about mechanical bits to make up what is effectively a semi-custom car. And then in other episodes, you and I have had a lot of fun with the options games, specifically the interiors of Porsches. Uh, this is somewhat different, actually a lot different. Uh, there are some bits of individualization here, like for example, the coloring here. This is called the classic interior, which is this suede gray black thing with the red seats and the red leather door tops and red leather dash top. And then there's the individual option of this very cool seat belt. We've seen this before in red, yellow, and now silver. Uh, and then specific to the Spider is the steering wheel, which is a smaller diameter steering wheel. And you're thinking that looks very familiar. Well, it should because it comes out of the Cayman GT4 as well as a GT3. Now, we need to put all this aside and go to my broken car mentality of liking weirdo cars. 
The thing about this that I love the most is it's imperfect. Like, Porsches are, they've been in the past, like when the 928 first came out, I remember reading the magazines of those things, they said the car was almost too perfect and it was wonderful. This one, they've actually engineered some imperfection for weirdos like me. Case in point, the door handles. So think about the work that those brakes have to do over on the 991 side of the house. That car is 3,200 plus pounds. That's over 300 pounds more than this car. And that's not an inconsequential difference. That's about a little more than 10% difference. So you got the same stopping power. How does it really translate here? Now, number one, let's get some speed up here. Actually, let's downshift, get some speed up. Let's put our foot into the stompers. Um, I'd say check. Uh, then, <laughs> number two, I've been driving this thing now, like, all day. I literally got in this car at 8 a.m. It's almost 5 p.m. right now. And we've, you've seen the driving we've been doing with this thing. Virtually no fade. Now, there is the carbon ceramic option on the Spider. So, frankly, if you're taking the car on the track, that's what you would use it for. But I, I don't know if you would take this thing on the track the way it's set up with the roof and those kind of roll bars and, you know, that, whatever you end up doing. But this is more than enough for the general accepted purpose that we talked about previously, that this is a Canyon Carving car. So, you want to speak Hawaiian? Well, before there was a Wikipedia, there was a Wiki Wiki shuttle. So let's you and I do something a bit different, something we never do. Let's have a come to Jesus discussion. Um, I've kind of said this throughout now two episodes without coming out and flat out saying it, but now I'm going to say it. This. This ain't no Cayman GT4 convertible. In fact, it was never intended to be a Cayman GT4 convertible. It is intended to be its own thing, which is actually quite different from a Boxster or a Boxster GTS, but it doesn't have quite that trackability that a Cayman GT4 does have. Um, and does, does that mean this is a bad thing? Absolutely not. It means it has a very singular purpose, and that is what we're doing today, or if we choose to get the car back in California and go out to the canyons, that is what this thing is really at home doing. And frankly, making you feel like an incredibly accomplished driver in the process. So in summary, what do we got? Well, we need to break this into two parts. There's the analytical side and there's the emotional side. On the analytical side, there are a number of technical changes here. There are some visual changes here as well. And really, if you watched our Boxster GTS episode back in July, that car was one of the most balanced cars we have ever driven, especially one with the roof down. Uh, and this, it's the same kind of balance. In practice, you feel that this is the same balanced vehicles, but the limits significantly higher. Now, let's put aside the analytical side and move to the emotional side. This, this is one of the closest cars we have ever driven to my kind of church, my religion of vehicles. And that's because of kind of the hind quarters here, the stupid door handles, and the weirdo roof. You know, it, it makes me think fondly upon cars built in the southeast of England in a shed, but it'll start every day and not give you a stitch of trouble. Uh, and with that, I need to recuse myself and now turn the question around to you guys. We talked about in the tech review, what does this now compete with? But now let's go back to just Boxsters. Think about it, you've got a regular Boxster, you've got a Boxster GTS, and now a Spider. Which one would you choose? And don't just tell me which one you would choose, tell me why you would choose it, 
and tell me what region of the world you live in. And for good measure, let me know what you're driving now. Let me know in the comments below or via our social media, Motoman TV, All More Nerd, Motoman TV, All Nerd, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And with that, I want to leave you with two things. Number one, make sure you download our fancy new mobile application, which I had a hand in designing from Apple iTunes or Google Play. It is free. And number two, I just want to say the word humu humu, nuku nuku, amu apu, or apu amu. Anyway, Billy's been telling me I pronounce it wrong, so mahalo.